If you only had two buckets, one 5 liter and one 7 liter, and no measurement markings at all, do you think it's really possible to get exactly six liters of water using just these two? Most people get stuck right here. But in this video, you're going to see how this puzzle can be solved without guesswork using a clever Japanese trick. Hi everyone, today we're going to look at a puzzle that seems very simple at first glance and usually pushes people toward trial and error. But once you understand the logic behind it, you'll see how clean and elegant the solution really is. Here's the problem. We want to measure exactly six liters of water using only a five liter bucket, a seven liter bucket, and an unlimited water source. The important point is that none of the buckets are graduated. That means we can't fill them halfway and we can't jump straight to the answer from the start. The only operations allowed are completely filling a bucket or completely emptying it. Ready to solve it? All right. Here we're going to use a technique inspired by Japanese mathematics, a method that turns the problem into a clear geometric picture instead of relying on trial and error. If you remember from math class, we often work with a two-dimensional coordinate system a horizontal axis, and a vertical axis, where every point is defined by a pair of numbers. For example, the point 00, zero means we have nothing, and the point 55 five means we've moved five units in both directions. Now, let's bring this idea into the bucket problem. Every possible state of the buckets can be represented as a two-dimensional point, written as X and Y. The first number shows how much water is in the five-liter bucket, and the second number shows how much water is in the 7 liter bucket. So when we're at the point zero, 00, both buckets are completely empty. And when we reach the point 57, both buckets are completely full. Now, let's take this one step further. Instead of the usual rectangular coordinate grid, we consider a grid with a 60 degree angle. A grid made of equilateral triangles, not squares. Inside this grid, we draw a parallelogram with side lengths of 5 units and 7 units. The corners of this shape correspond exactly to the fully empty or fully full states of the buckets. We label these corners as 00, 50, 07, and 57. Now the real game begins. What's our goal? Our goal is to start from the point 00, zero and, using vectors and allowed movements, Reach the point 0, 06. And what does the point 0, 06 mean? It means the 5 liter bucket is completely empty, and the 7 liter bucket contains exactly 6 liters of water. But not every movement is allowed. These movements follow a simple rule. We start moving with a fixed vector. That vector continues until it must hit one of the edges of the shape, and we're not allowed to stop in the middle. Stopping is only allowed on the edges. And when the vector hits an edge, that's where the mirror reflection rule comes in. Just like light hitting a mirror, the vector reflects off the edge and continues in a new direction with the same angle toward the opposite side. So the path looks like a zigzag. This process keeps repeating until we finally reach the destination. Let's trace the path step by step. We start from point zero, 00, draw the vector, and reach the point 50. Then the path reflects and takes us to zero 05. Another reflection, and we move to 55. With the next reflection, we arrive at 37. From there, we move to 30. Then we reach zero 03. The next reflection takes us to 53. We keep going like this until we eventually reach the point 51, and as the final move, using the green vector, we land exactly on the point 06. And that's it. At the same time as we draw these vectors, we write down, on the left side of the image, the sequence of points we reach at each step. Now, if we translate these paths into the real world, things become truly fascinating. Every movement on this grid corresponds to either filling or emptying one of the buckets. So what do these vectors actually mean? 
The first move to the point five zero means we completely fill the five liter bucket. The next move means we pour the water from the five liter bucket into the seven liter bucket, which brings us to zero five. The next move is filling the five liter bucket again, giving us five five. The next move takes us to three seven. The point three seven means we pour water from the five liter bucket into the seven liter bucket until the seven liter bucket is completely full. Then we completely empty the seven liter bucket, reaching three zero. Next, we pour the remaining three liters from the five liter bucket into the seven liter bucket, reaching zero three. After that, we fill the five liter bucket again, reaching five three. Once more, we pour water from the five liter bucket into the seven liter bucket. Four liters are transferred, and one liter remains in the five liter bucket, so we reach one seven. Then we empty the seven liter bucket again, reaching one quadrintro. We pour that one liter into the seven liter bucket, reaching zero one. Finally, we fill the five liter bucket one more time, reaching five one. And as the last move, we pour all the water from the five liter bucket into the seven liter bucket. And that's it. When we reach the point zero six, the five liter bucket is empty, and the seven liter bucket contains exactly six liters of water. No guessing and no trial and error. Is the path we just saw the only way to reach the point zero six? The answer is no. There are other paths as well. One of the simplest alternative paths is to start the movement, not with the five liter bucket, but with the seven liter bucket. That means instead of going from zero zero to five zero as the first move, we directly fill the seven liter bucket and move to the point zero seven. From there, following the same rules, we can still reach the point zero six through a different path. That path looks like this from zero seven. To five two, from five two to zero two, then from this point to two zero, from this point to two seven, then from this point to five four, and we keep following this pattern until we reach five six, and as the final move with the green vector, we arrive exactly at zero six, and that's it. This is another valid solution. Pretty cool, right? Did you enjoy this Japanese style solution? This is where you see that these puzzles aren't just games with buckets. There's a beautiful geometric logic behind them, and once you learn it, you can solve any puzzle of this type. Now it's your turn. In the comments, tell me, with a five-liter bucket and a nine-liter bucket, how would you measure exactly six liters of water? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can tackle even more awesome puzzles together. Thanks for watching.